Xander, uh, Jay was in here earlier today, and he said uh, he believes he has the support of the board, and I am the right person to lead us forward. I believe that in my heart. Given the recent agreement with the strategic sports group, do you have confidence in Jay going forward? I guess we'll start with the easy ones. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've, you know what I've said in the past uh, on, on how I feel about it. Uh, you know, trust is uh, something, something that's uh, pretty tender. So um, words are words, and I'd say he, in, in my book, he's got a long way to go. He, he could be the guy, but in my book, he's got a long way to go to, to gain the trust of the, the membership. Uh, I'm sure he's got the support of the board since they were with him uh, making some of those decisions. But for me personally, um, he's got quite a ways to go. We'll move on down the line here. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Clayton Freeman, Florida Times Union. Um, I know when you first stopped here, you tied for second five years ago. And since then, what do you feel is the biggest challenge you've encountered here in this course? You know, obviously it's been a, more of a rocky road since then here for you. Yeah, they, they moved the tournament to a different time of year. Um, completely different property, to be completely honest. Uh, black in May, I believe, is when it was. Uh, it was firm, fast. The greens weren't overseed. They were just Bermuda. Um, the place got brown. It got sketchy. Um, balls were rolling all over the place. So now it's green. It's lush, softer, slower, uh, super thick, rough, not Bermuda. Rye overseed, or whichever you call it, and um, I could be could be wrong with that one, but it's just a completely different property. So just need to adjust uh, to to the play style, and I, I know I can do it. I just need to to do it. Other questions? We can go to Dan right here first. Sorry, right here in the front row, and then right behind. With the state of golf and, and players playing on different tours, do you feel like there's added emphasis on the major championships? Considering that it brings everyone together? Yeah. Um, may, maybe for, for a viewer. Um, for me, it, it's pretty similar. A major championship's a major championship, and I don't see myself preparing or thinking about it any different than I did, did prior to the splitting of tours. I guess the better way to ask it is, do, do the tour events feel a little different now? I mean, you just see less. I just see less of the guys that I'm, I'm used to seeing uh, when, I, when I first came out on tour. So that aspect's different, but my day-to-day -day is, is, is pretty much the same. I'm still trying to prepare and, and, and win these events like I was prior. Uh, Zonda, you've been doing a little work with Chris Como recently. Mm -hmm. Just wondering how that came about and uh, what you guys are working through. Yeah, um, I've actually known Chris for quite some time. Uh, one of my buddies back home uh, in San Diego, he he sought out Chris's help. 2010, maybe 20, 2009, 2010. So um, he would go see Chris in Dallas, and uh, you know I'd Facetime my buddy, and you know Chris would be there, and so it became kind of I've, I've just known of him and known known him for for quite some time, and. Um, I've always liked Chris, and uh, you know he's in West Palm, and I just moved over there, so it was it was a, a pretty easy meetup, and uh, I think things have been going pretty well. Is there anything um, like he's keying in on in your swing, or what are you, what are you what are the advice that you're kind of getting from him? Yeah, it's a trickle. I think he's learning that I can be a bit, you know, I wouldn't call myself a head case, but a little too technical at times. Um, so he's just it's a great song. Um, it's a bit of a trickle in terms of information, um, but we're sort of still, you know, working through, uh, you know, how he wants to feed me information. But for the most part, uh, kind of, you know, looked at my swings. Oops, sorry, looked at my swings since I've been on tour, you know, from 17 up until now, and sort of how it's changed, and sort of what he liked then, and what he liked now, and, and vice versa. So, uh, I mean, I think he sort of understands my release pattern and just kind of wants to un unlock that potential. We get that microphone back to Kathy in the row right behind you. Thank you. Xander, you've won a tour championship. You've won the Olympics. Those are big events. You've been on Ryder Cups. Is the players a bigger step than any of those? And there are a lot of people 
that it would be a life-changing event for, but you've been so successful already that I don't know that it would change your life. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, it, it would be a, a very big thing to me personally. Uh, there's so much I want to accomplish in the game, so anytime I can check off a really big box, uh, or any box for that matter, uh, in this game is, is, is special to me and my team. So in terms of like, changing my life, uh, I don't, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I feel like I'm the same guy before I won, won the Olympics or won the gold medal at the Olympics. So, uh, but yeah, the players is definitely something I want to win. We'll come right here and then come here. Sander, do you think the uh, status of this event is compromised in any way by the current situation, which means that the Masters champion, the US PGA champion, aren't part of the field here? I don't think it helps the tournament. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you'd like to have uh, those players playing uh, in an ideal world, but I mean, I, I feel like we're sort of beating a dead horse uh, in this media room a little bit. Uh, the few times I click on the golf to, to read it, it we're definitely beating, beating, beating a dead horse in my opinion. I mean, everyone kind of knew what was going to happen when they made a decision. And uh, this was probably the, the highest prob probability chance of, of the outcome, which is to have people on different tours at the time. So um, I know the guys are, are working on getting everyone back together. But in the meantime, um, I'm kind of on the page of it is what it is. We'll go to Ryan first, and then we'll come back center. Sandra, just to follow up on the question about uh, Chris, how do you keep that new dynamic from, from changing, which was a, a big relationship with your dad being your swing coach and, and letting that kind of filter into, into that relationship? Uh, yeah, I mean, Chris and my dad, you know, spoke. They've also known each other for, for a bit of time. And um, from a similar approach, I guess, of just trying to not – do anything that doesn't feel natural to me or force force the club or, or have a feel that isn't sort of sound in, in my in my uh, in my game um, they're sort of similar in that sense so uh, I ask a lot of questions and um, that may lead to too much information at times and uh, like I said before I think you know Chris is just trying to put me on a slow feeder uh, at the moment Um, you know, I still talk to my dad all the time. It's, it's not like I, I don't. You know, my dad, my, from a very young age, my dad told me, he's like, you know, I, you know, you know, happy that I can be your coach, but there's a time, there, there might be a time where, you know, in order for you to take it to the next level, you may need to go see someone else. Um, so he said those words to me when I was, when I was a kid, um, and he, he'll still say them now. So having his trust and, you know, his loyalty there, uh, you know, there's not much of a burden, you know, on my plate, uh, fortunately for me. Sander, uh, Camilo Villegas was elected as the new chairman of the Players Advisory Council. What are your thoughts on this, and how do you anticipate his involvement in this council? I think it's great. Um, Camilo is someone that I've uh, watched play for a very long time. Um, so I think it's, it's nice to have, I think when you look at a, a board or a council, you kind of want uh, you know, a little bit of everything in there, and I think Camilo will bring that sort of... Uh, elderly experience factor in um, that, you know, someone younger might miss. Gary? Xander, uh, no intention on jinxing you in any way here, but... Don't say it. What goes into making 41 cuts in a row out here as competitive as it, as it can get, and you're not ducking the big tournaments, you're not cherry-picking a whole lot, so what... What is in somebody's game to make that many cuts in a row to be that consistent? Commentator's curse, here it is, huh? Um, no, uh... Just playing, not thinking about it too much, to be honest. Uh, I, I play to win, and I don't play to make cuts, so it makes it easier to make the cut when you're playing to win, I think, and when you're up, uh, up sort of near the top of the leaderboard often. But I think most of my big grinds on tour have been um, some, some epic cuts that I've made, just pulling something out of my hat at the last second, uh, whether it's making a putt or, or holding a shot from 175 yards or, or something of that nature. So... Um, just, just trying my best every, every, every time I, every time I tee it up. Alex. Yeah, Xander, understanding that we're a little focused on the live thing and obviously you came in right after Jay, 
when you talk about it first, do you, do you think the board is representative of what the players are thinking? Which uh, the board is as a whole, or like the player directors and, and independent directors? Yes. No, not the independent directors, but the player directors. Yeah, I mean, I'd say I would imagine the, the player directors have our, have our best interest and um, have been trying to navigate this space to, to the best of their ability.